Good evening, everyone. It's Julie Hedges, and welcome to the Tarot Journey. Right here on the third Monday of every month, I get to be with you and share this wonderful time together. I love being part of Star Nation's organization, getting to share all kinds of wisdom with you, whether it's the tarot and sometimes astrology and Akashic Records and tonight. We're doing something very special, something I'm really, really excited about, and that is Animal Encounters of the Third Kind. <laughs> and so welcome. Come on in. Thank you all for watching tonight. Hello, Barbie, coming in tonight. Rob is here. Neshi is here. And I've got two very special guests that I'm going to introduce and be with us to really share this time together um animal encounters of the third kind so what is that all about well i think some of us can remember that movie um that alien movie in the 80s called close encounters of the third kind well i was kind of playing on that right so animals and animal encounters of the third kind is is about our connection to the, the world of animals and the world of nature and some of those, did that just happen to me? Did I just really experience that? Did, did I have an encounter with the, the other kind that, uh, did I understand that one? Did he understand me? Were we really communicating? So that's what we want to talk about tonight. And, um, so I want to bring on my two guests right away here. So let me bring on, um, let's see here. Let me try this, this way. Um, I'll just bring them all on because I'm <laughs> struggling here tonight <laughs> with the live. So Leslie Serenessi here in the middle and Neshi, of course, everybody knows Neshi here. Star Nation's organization. So let me do an official introduction with, with Leslie. She is a contributing writer for Star Nation's magazine, and she has made several appearances on Star Nation's programs, the communications from home. And I think you have also done um, an academy class, a closed group academy mini class, didn't you? Something uh, made yet. an appearance there? Not yet? Okay, well, maybe we can twist her arm tonight to do that. <laughs> so um, a little bit about Leslie, and I want to read it here so I don't uh, trip over anything. She is an animal communicator and activist and advocate from East Michigan, and she volunteers with rescue organizations all over the country, and I'm sure you have seen in the magazine and heard her talk about her friends her four-legged friends in Montana, specifically, um, her the bear clan that she works with. Um, so she works with large and small animal ambassadors all across the country. And she works with clients in animal communication all across the world. So right where she is, she can talk to um, your four-legged friends or your winged ones or swimming ones, whatever, Wherever you are in the world, she can do that. And she is available for sessions with your beloved animal friends. And she is teaching at Star Nations Academy very soon. And also she is teaching her, her local area um, here in the spring and traveling all over. So um, we're going to put her website in here as we get started. But I also want to introduce Neshi. Neshi she is the, the founder and CEO of Star Nations organizations. What else what else can we say about, about Neshi? But she is a lifelong she's a lifelong ally and friend of the natural world. And she has spent probably her whole life teaching about this. And in all, you know, the levels from the elementary kind of understanding, teaching her fellow, um, her fellow, you know, her friends and her, her peer group all the way up to now, she is leading 
she is leading the academy. She is leading Star Nations organizations. So, so teaching and working within the natural world and with the natural world is something she has always done. So she teaches about our connection with Grandmother Earth and our kinship with all creation. I just love that. And so please tune in every afternoon um, on the Star Nations public page yeah. for the daily wisdom, the daily card wisdom. And right now it's still the um, the animal deck, right? The, the Druidic animal oracle deck. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's amazing. It is amazing, definitely. But who knows? There might be something else coming up soon. So thank you both very much for joining me tonight. <laughs> so glad to be here. Yeah, glad to oh, be here. <laughs> definitely. And for those who are, are joining us, I would love it if you would mind to take a moment to, to share the show. Maybe there is someone... Um, who might want to be a part of this and and share in the animal encounters of our time. So let me just take a moment to do the same here. Gosh, Julie, while you're doing that, Good. yeah, I, say, I just love the title. Don't you, Leslie? Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, oh my gosh, okay, we're going to have the stories and that sort of thing. It's like, which one to pick? Oh, there uh -huh. are so many. <laughs> animal encounters. Yeah. Oh, the third kind. Hmm. Okay. So I've got that shared there. It's hard for me to talk and do that at the same time. <laughs> um, so what I d wanted to, to um, do for tonight, since this is going to be a sharing show, um, I do want to ground us. So I want to do a quick grounding. I, I do that practice uh, twice a day and I'm always give a shout out to Neshi who um, reminds us every day to ground I'm like thank you for doing that thank you so much for doing that um, and this is soul work we're doing because we are talking about the animal allies and the natural world so I invite you to place both of your feet on the floor and just kind of get comfortable and we're going to just really feel our connection to Grandmother Earth and, and do this quick grounding with me, if you would. My feet are connected to Grandmother Earth and I am grounded. My knees are connected to my feet, connected to Grandmother Earth and I am grounded. My hips are connected to my knees, connected to my feet, connected to Grandmother Earth and I am grounded. My heart is connected to my hips, connected to my knees, connected to my feet, connected to Grandmother Earth, and I am grounded. My heart is connected to my hips, connected to my knees, connected to my feet, connected to Grandmother Earth, and I am grounded. My head and neck are connected to my heart, connected to my hips, connected to my knees, connected to my feet, connected to Grandmother Earth, and I am grounded. My whole body, my bones and organs and cells are connected to my feet, connected to Grandmother Earth, and I am grounded. I am grounded. I am grounded. And while we are grounded, just calling upon the divine light to surround us in sacred space, and wherever you are, and whenever you are, to maybe invite in your angels, ancestors, and allies, especially your animal totems and power allies to come in and join us this evening for a discussion about animal encounters of the third kind. And so it is. Ah, there we are. <laughs> There we are. That feels good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it did. Very Hello. Good. Thank you. So I have some questions to get us started, but I would really invite our viewers and listeners to share their animal encounter stories or nature encounter stories in the chat room. Because 
I, I really want us to share in this together. And what do I mean by that? So do you have an animal encounter or a nature encounter that has changed your life? Was there a situation or an animal that saved your life? Did you have an encounter um, or a situation that greatly advanced your path or broadened your path or deepened your walk or changed it completely mm -hmm. or opened up that whole road for you to go on your path? How about an encounter that really answered a question on your heart and, and opened your heart to the fullness of who you are as a soul having a human experience and what our connection is all alike. So those are the encounters that, that we would like to feature here. We'd mm -hmm. like to feature here tonight. And so let's just give a shout out, a roll call for everybody here and um, the chat. So let me scroll down and start with, hello, Barbie. Thank you for coming on tonight. I appreciate that. And Neshi, of course, for loving and sharing the show. So happy to be here. Thank you. And <laughs> Rob, he's joined us, but he's um, <laughs> making his mashed potatoes into the devil's tower. Oh, Okay. All righty. Playing with your food there. Okay. And um, Rochelle says hello. Hello, everyone. And who else do we have? Debbie Gabby. Hello, lady. My Leo friend. Okay. I'm going to give a quick animal encounter with Miss Debbie here. So just a few weeks ago, we were together and we were over at my house and um, we were talking about the stars and, and her beautiful chart and my cat who really, who really could just not really give a care about people. She might like come in and like, meh, and then go on her way, but she never, doesn't really interact all that much. Well, she hopped up on the table and first she just kind of laid out like, yeah. And then she was all over Miss Debbie, just loving on her, loving on her, right in her face. And then she sat right in front of Debbie and she just looked at her. She was just looking at her. And I'm like, what is my cat doing? This crazy, crazy cat. She doesn't do this. What, what gives? And it took me a while. I'm, you know, I do this, but sometimes I'm dense. It took me a while that, oh, Okay, in astrology, in astrology, Virgo um, rules all domesticated animals. However, Leo rules all cats. Every kind of cat, from the tiniest ones to the biggest roaring ones, Leo is all cats. Hmm. Well, my friend Debbie is a beautiful Leo. So my kitty was paying homage to her queen, her Leo queen. Oh my goodness. I'm totally convinced of that, that she was totally paying homage to here. Here is one of my people. So, <laughs> so there's a nature encounter for us to get started. <laughs> and hello, Miss Polly Joe. And of course, Rob always says, what do you know, Polly Joe? Linda Groza is here. Ellen Bartos is here. Thank you. Jackie Fitzpatrick is here. And oh, thank you all for joining. So if you have a story, please go ahead. Make sure I'm in the camera here. Please go ahead and, um, you know, share that in the chat so we can feature it. And my kitty's name is Salen. Yes, the uh, Gaelic word for Halloween. And she is the epitome of Leo energy. She could just kind of she is the queen. She could kind of take you or leave you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to maybe get started with, um, with some questions for our guests. And lastly, who is the animal communicator first, you are really launching some uh, classes right here from the get go. 
Mm-hmm. So have you have you been doing this and you're kind of in the middle of things or is this kind of starting you off? Tell us about what's coming up for you and I'm going to get your website in here. Great. So I actually have a class um, here in Clarkston, Michigan coming up this weekend. It's a level one animal communication class and um, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's the second time um, that I've taught it here live and uh, so I'm uh, looking really looking forward to you know getting back to it. I've, I had a kind of a busy year, so I hadn't been able to teach it as many times as I would like to. But um, then I'm going to be coming to Wisconsin to Star Nations Academy, <laughs> and I'm going to be teaching the Level One Animal Communication class there in um, April, April 27th and 28th. Right. And um, ah. So I'm very excited about that. It'll be my first class at at the Academy. Yes. And so if you ever wondered what your pets were thinking or if you ever wanted to tell them something or you ever wanted them to know something or you were worried about them or you just wanted them to stop doing something or start doing something, (laughs) um, this is the class for you. And you can... Um, what we go over is talking to animals long distance. So you do not have to be face to face with them. And then also talking to them after they cross over into spirit. So even if you have um, pets from, you know, from the past on the other side of the rainbow, um, on the other side of the bridge, then, you know, you can still communicate with them. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good class. It gives you all the tools that you need to, um, you know, be able to telepathically communicate with animals. And so um, anybody who likes pets, knows a pet, likes animals, ever heard of animals, would, <laughs> would, benefit, <laughs> would benefit from this class. So. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so talking about animal communication, um, and you're probably going to go over this with, with your class, but for some people who who may not know, and even for mm. myself here, yeah. do it, do animals speak English? Do they say hi, <laughs> Leslie? That's a great question. So actually they speak to me in several different ways. One way oh. is they show me pictures in my head um, okay. where it's just like a still picture. And sometimes it'll be a picture and it'll start to move, kind of like a Harry Potter sort of thing. Oh, um, Sometimes it's a whole movie, like it's a little video playing, and then sometimes it's a word or sentences or just a conversation. Um, a lot of times they communicate with emotions, so all of a sudden, you know, I'll feel if they are um, have anxiety or if they're worried or, um, you know, if they're scared or, you know, if they're very chill, you know, sometimes I'll get that, you know, kind of hang 10 feeling. Um <laughs> So it, different ways. So I try um, the best that I can to communicate back to them the same way that they communicate with me. And even oh, though, okay. yeah. So even though it is words and it is English that I can understand, um, it's still all you know telepathic. It's all you know nonverbal. So, mm-hmm. uh, but I can actually you know hear them say things. And um, my my best. The part that I think is this the greatest is sometimes when they have accents because that is just hilarious. Oh my gosh, tell us about that. <laughs> That's so cool. There yeah. every once in a while they'll have an accent like <coughs> excuse me, my my dog actually, Luna, she has a Russian accent. I don't know why. Um it just Wow. Usually it fits their personality, but I was talking to a dog, um, a little it was this little Chihuahua, and uh and he said, listen, I'm so glad that you, uh, we got this opportunity to talk to each other because I have some things I want you to tell her. And I've been telling her, and she's not getting it. <laughs> um, so I told his owner. That like a New York accent. Exactly, oh, very oh. New Jersey kind New of Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, oh, my God. That's, yeah. He, she said, oh, my God, that is so his personality. That is so him. So I, I think that sometimes oh um, their personality is not always, you know, from where they're from. I think it just okay. fits their their personality. Yeah, I think their accent fits their personality. I've had oh some, my goodness. you know, where they had a very Southern accent and because they were a very proper, you know, kind of Southern lady kind of oh. thing. So, so, yeah, that part is hilarious. I love that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm sure when... 
or I don't know, maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, but when you first encounter that, you're like, this little creature has this big booming, you know, New York accent or something, you know, <laughs> it's like treating them like with all seriousness of this is who they are. So not, <laughs> not overlaying your own thought of how can this be? This little bitty creature has this big personality and this big voice. So. Yeah. Wow. Yep, it's true. And, you know, it's it's funny because, you know, my specialty is is grizzly bears, and I deal with grizzly bears all the time and Kodiak bears and black bears, all kinds of bears. But, um, you know, some of the grizzly bears just have the kindest, softest, gentlest um, personality. And it's, you know, people always say, oh, isn't that too much energy to handle? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> no, not at all. So do you find um, a wide range of, I'm going to say, vocalics or accents or, or mannerisms, un, um, inflections with, with the bears? Do they differ a lot among themselves? They do. You know, they each oh. have their own personality and it really, you know, comes out, um, you know, Brutus you know, who is the one that I, you know, talk to most often. And he's, you know, the one I give a lot of the credit to for, you know, helping me. Um, he, he helped me to understand that it wasn't just my imagination. Because even though he sounded like me in my head, it had a whole different cadence. So um, okay. he would say, he would say to me, um, you know what, you know what? And I would say what? And he goes, I like grapes. You know why? And so he was talking like a little mm. boy and I could tell that that wasn't, it was different than, you know, what I hear mm. in my head. Cause sometimes it, you know, in the beginning it was difficult because they all sounded like me. It was all my voice in my head mm -hmm. and it was wow. hard, hard to kind of distinguish, you know, was it my imagination or was, were they really talking to me? And he really helped because even though it sounded like me, it was very different with that different, you know, cadence. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is so awesome. Okay. So we have your website up here, www.ispeaktoanimals.com. Can people still register for your, your class this coming weekend in Michigan? You can. I have or is it closed? No, I have a couple of open seats left. Okay. 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 And so, you know, they can get in touch with you and get that registered and also to book a session with you to yeah. talk with their animal friend. So yep. here's another thing. So would someone, well, I'm, I'm sure someone would want to do that if they have a personal connection with it, not just the backyard squirrels, <laughs> but you could still talk to the backyard squirrels, right? Yeah. Maybe yep. you could tell the backyard squirrels not to, not to tease <laughs> your dogs, right? Yes. <laughs> Hey, I, get out! I, I have uh, <laughs> requested that a raccoon vacate an attic before. Oh, so. okay, everybody. Here you go. Here's your lady. She she can she can do it. She can get the the snakes out of Ireland and all of that too, and, and raccoons out of your attic. And I have a creature that's been in my attic. So, and I think it's in the physical world, not. <laughs> not you know the bats and the belfries. So <laughs> mm, maybe I'll try to work on that. So thank you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that down for now. Um, Neshi, as we were talking um, before the show, I um, some some questions that I had. Would you mind to share? an animal encounter story where, or a nature encounter story in which you had a, an urgent message or a warning or a protection kind of situation. Yeah. You know, like when we said earlier, you know, the stories, you know, there's a lot of them. And so, you know, which okay. one? Which one? Yeah, but, which one? Know, well, I was asking, I was asking my team, you know, so which one okay. should we share? And, um, Here's the one that they would like like you guys to hear about. And because, you know, owl, owl is, um, in the Native American world, owl actually creates a lot of fear because um, it's a harbinger. It's, it's a messenger of death, right? 
And so nobody, <laughs> if you walk into an elder's home, you never see any pictures or tchotchkes or anything about owls, nothing. Um, yeah. And so, um, and my mom has, has a thing about owls too. And so, um, so anyway, the, 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 the close encounter with an owl, this was years ago. My, my father-in-law was still alive at that point. And so that had to have been about 90, 95, I think. Yeah, 1995. Um, we used to live up in a little town called Caroline between um, Shano and um, Wittenberg, Wisconsin, so up north. And uh, across the street from our house was a restaurant. And we used to go over there all the time for, for supper. And my in-laws were up. They were looking at purchasing some property up there. And it was winter. I want to say it was probably January, maybe. There was a lot of snow. Um, we had finished supper. We we're coming back across the street and we were standing across the street from our house and next to our house, we had, I don't know, I think three or four like uh, cedar bushes. Okay. And on one of the cedar bushes was an owl. And how did we know that? Well, there were street lights and he was hooting. And I literally, Paul's, Paul's walking right next to me, you know, and I literally stopped in my tracks. And it's like, because, it, you know, I mean, you grow up with the belief system, right? And no matter, okay. and so no matter how old you are, it's like, you know, my, my, I gasped, I thought, and Paul grabbed my hand. He goes, it's going to be okay. I said, I know, but you know, that, that means somebody's going to die, you know? And here's my father-in-law right next to me. He, he picked up some snow and he was making a snowball and he was going to toss it at the owl, right? And I, I caught his hand in mid throw. Don't, don't do that. Mm. And he looked at me and he said, why? And he said, oh, I just want to get rid of him. I said, no, you just thank him for coming and we walk around him. <laughs> and so, I, and at that time in my life, you know, especially in that moment, it's like, you don't think about com communicating with the animal. It's like, oh my uh -huh. gosh, <laughs> you know. But you know what happened? That was, in, that was in January, April 1st of 1996. My father in law was diagnosed with lung cancer, mm. fast moving lung cancer. And he, he walked on um, October 31st of 1996. So that, that's the story they wanted me to share with you guys because it was life altering. It was, uh, there was certainly a message there from the fact that he was the one who was going to throw the snowball and I stopped him. Now, the thing is, is that Al and I, um, I was his spirit doula and um, mm. yeah. And so it was, it was that, that in itself brought us closer together than we, we had ever been. You know, you know, the in-law stuff, you know, so, uh -huh. and, so, and so, yeah, that's that's the story that uh, they wanted me to share because I hadn't I don't think I've ever shared that story. I didn't even share it the other day when we had the owl as the as the oracle card. Well, we are so honored that you yeah. would share it right here yeah. in this time together. But, you know, um, I hear, you know, owl owl is actually my birth totem. And so growing, oh. up, growing up with that was, um, yeah, <laughs> especially when everybody's so afraid of them, right? My whole family was, you know, my grandparents and it's like, nobody ever talked about it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting because for me, Al is very special and I just had two encounters this week with the barred owl who is, um, with my business partner in jewelry, Marilla. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They have a neighborhood barred owl. And so he and she, I think they have a little family now, mm -hmm. like to visit just in the in the backyard. And so I got this beautiful yeah. picture that I shared tonight um, mm -hmm. when I was over there last night as twilight. So here's a shadow in the tree and, you know, the, the branches. So I just, mm -hmm. I just love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that You're You're beautiful welcome. story. Yeah. Leslie, can you share... Um, an animal or nature encounter story where where it was a, a warning or a revelation or answered something on your heart. Yeah. 
So, you know, I already started talking about it a little bit, but it really is um, Brutus the grizzly bear. Um, what I went, um, so, so to tell my story, when I was a little kid, we had a basset hound. And um, I always told my family what he was thinking and what he was feeling. And of course, you know, being the youngest of seven, they told me that it was, you know, just my imagination and just ignore Aww. it. And so when you have, you know, um, six brothers and sisters and parents, you know, telling you to ignore it, you ignore it. And I shut it off. I just completely shut it off. And I went to Montana to work with this grizzly bear rescue sanctuary to give the bears um, Reiki. And Oh, okay. Yeah. And while I was there, I started to hear them and I started to get the pictures in my head. And I, it was very disturbing. Um, and basically the whole, you know, thing started to crack open. And when I got to Brutus, he was the mm -hmm. third bear that I talked to. It just split completely wide open and floodgates came open and I could oh. hear everything he was saying crystal clear. And mm -hmm. it was um, literally life changing for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there were two ways that I knew absolutely that it wasn't, my imagination. It wasn't, um, anything that was, you know, that I was my own thoughts. And that was what I was talking about before about the cadence and the rhythm yeah. and his voice was different. But the biggest thing, the aha moment was he kept showing me a picture of him eating a candy cane and how he was so happy and just loved this candy cane. And I was like, no, they would not give a grizzly bear a candy cane. And so I kept asking him again and again, and he kept showing me uh, the same thing every time. And so, of course, you know, this is all going on in my head and I'm making this face. And the <laughs> owner, um, Amy, said to me, what? what? What is he saying? And I, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want her to say, are you insane? You know? <laughs> so I said, um, does he like peppermint? And she said, he loves candy canes. Oh, my gosh, he loves candy canes. <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> And so that night when I got back to my motel and I was really, you know, replaying every single moment of that day mm -hmm. in my head, I said, you know what, if I were making that up or if it were my imagination, I would have picked something completely different. I would have picked, you know, blueberries or salmon or honey or something that was very stereotypical for that anybody would think a bear would like. Right. right? And she, yeah. she said that, you know, sometimes when it's a, uh, for a treat, they'll give them a small candy cane or give them a piece of candy cane around Christmas time. And so I, I thought, you know, I wouldn't have picked that. And I kept, I kept questioning it and mm. the fact that it was actually correct. So that was my aha moment. And, and that literally put me on the path that I'm on now, which is, you know, being an animal communicator and doing it professionally and teaching people how to do it. I mean, that literally that day changed my life. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That is beautiful. And when was that? Can you pinpoint it back to a year or a time frame? September 4th, 2012. <laughs> oh, all right. I right mean, that, back that day. Oh. Yeah, that day, I mean, it literally changed my life forever. So, and, and it, it was uh, definitely Rob's him. sharing in his picnic basket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <baby. laughs> yeah. I have a similar um, story about, um, and then I will get to some that we have in the chat room because I, I see we've got several people sharing their stories in the chat room, but, uh, but about that idea of there can't be any way that I'm making this up. Yeah. And so this is one story that as I was putting this together that, you know, my, my folks wanted me to tell. So my, my sweet Molly, who is my daughter, she happens to have four legs and fur. She moved to heaven on uh, March 11th, 2016. And so that was the day that, that my life completely altered, right? For so long, she drove my life in a good way, but it was all about I got to take care of Molly. I got to get home and let Molly out and, you know, Molly, 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 Molly. And so when that happened, what do I do? There's no reason for me to race home after work anymore because she's not there. I don't, I don't have any reason to. So it was April of 2016. I don't know the exact date, but um, it was a nice spring day, a little chilly. I didn't want to go home because there's no reason to go home right after work. So I go to the park and 
one of my favorite trees. Now, this tree is in the Indiana Historic Tree Register. It's over 200 years old, and it's just, you know, just a block from me. So, and this tree loves people, loves people so much that somebody always drags a bench over from way far away. They drag a bench over, and even there's a little place in the tree in the northwest side of, of the tree, this little indention in her her root system of perfect for a bottom to sit. <laughs> so she likes people to sit there. And so I'm mm. sitting there tree and I'm just talking. There's nobody else around to hear me, but I'm just talking out loud and I'm, I'm just kind of looking at how the clouds are moving and the sun going down and all of that. And just telling the tree about how my life has changed because my Molly is not here. And um, so just kind of out of the corner of my eye, so I'm kind of looking this way, but out of the corner of my eye, I see from 50 yards out, I see this, this squirrel just, you know, hop it up, 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 straight at me here sitting in on the, you know, little bench of the tree that the tree has. And I'm trying to just, you know, zone out, enjoy myself coming and coming and coming. And eventually I'm thinking, is this kamikaze? Am I going to have to dive off of this tree for this squirrel? What the heck is going on? And come, 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 charging right at me and stops 10 feet away. Okay. So I kind of look. I'm looking at him. He's looking at me and takes off again for me. I'm like, what? And I'm, I'm halfway out to dive in the grass away from this and he breaks to my left and goes up the tree he's like well what was that all about <laughs> <sighs> take a breath and just okay getting back to you know enjoying nature here yeah i'm enjoying nature and then i see out of the corner of my <laughs> eye <laughs> no yeah eyeball to eyeball <laughs> right right here so I kind of turn my head because I don't know what's going on but but knowing enough to know that this isn't just this isn't just just so I'm, I'm just kind of looking this way and I I say in my regular voice like I'm talking to you it's like hi I'm Julie you must have a message for me and what I hear what I hear in my clear audience um, sounds like sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks, but speed it up even faster and faster. But this is this is what is said to me in just regular English, right? I'm not even going to try to Alvin stuff. I'm sorry about the creature you call Molly, and then zoomed up the tree. And so it was almost too fast to register, but I got that. I'm sorry mm -hmm. about the creature you call Molly. And then just up the tree. Now, some people say, oh, well, it, you know, isn't that nice? You know, you have kind of this stereotypical, yeah, that's what a squirrel would sound like. But I know that it didn't come from me because Molly is my daughter. Mm -hmm. I would never, ever, ever refer to her as a creature. But that squirrel said, I'm sorry about the creature you call Molly. Hmm. And so I know what that encounter was. Sorry, it's emotional. Mm -hmm. And it, and further, you know, after that particular encounter, it took me a few days to kind of figure out, well, how did that happen? How, how was that orchestrated so it got me back to the tree and I was talking to the tree and this tree is absolutely huge when you think of okay when we used to have our show Neshi gather at the world tree and the tree of life mm -hmm. all those huge branches up and out mm -hmm. yeah. well, that root system is down and out mm -hmm. so I know that that tree through her root system, sent out a signal. Anybody, any, anybody, hawks, squirrels, 
ducks, whatever in the vicinity, want to come give a message of encouragement to this two-legged creature right here. <laughs> and so, do, 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 here comes the squirrel. <laughs> Okay, so there is an example of one that I know that it didn't come from me. <laughs> so, yay, let's see what we have in the chat room. Now, I got this story from Linda Groza when I first um, posted it on my Facebook page of, hey, I'm having this show and please share your stories. You know, you might be featured on the show. So Linda shared with me, and I'm going to read it here. I've got it. Shortly after my sister passed away in a vehicle accident, I was in the dog kennel out back where her dog stayed. A bright yellow butterfly wouldn't leave me alone, was making me laugh and teasing me like my sister used to. Yeah, here she goes. She, she typed it again. Mm -hmm. After my sister passed, I went out to the dog kennel. Made me laugh like my sister used to. Mm -hmm. I love that. She also has a story about the owls. Look out my window one morning and have a snow owl and two babies. The snowy owl is my favorite owl. And the snowy owl is the largest of the owls that come down here to Southern Indiana where I am. And they don't, they only come down when it's super cold because they live where the air hurts your face, right? Nobody <laughs> way up in the Arctic, that's where their home is. And so if there's an eruption where they have a plethora of them, the young males, they have to go find food. So they come way down here in the, you know, the lower um, United States. So she had um, snowy owls. Wow. Yeah. All righty. And let's see who else. Um, Rob shares, I've once communicated with bees. I'm not sure the species, but they are the kind that nest in the ground and get ornery <laughs> when you go over them with a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So tell us, Rob, what um, what did you communicate with them? <laughs> what did you communicate to them? And, and what did they communicate back? I'd like to know. Um, you know, I used to I used to uh, remind Paul to to say a little something before he mowed the grass. I'd say, tell him to remind him to tell the fairies and, and the animals to stay mm. away because I'm, I'm going to mow. So vacate, you know, for a little while, and he can come back. Mm. And and I'd ask him if he didn't. Oh no, I forgot. So we had, I ended up putting a fairy decal, a little sticker on the this oh. <laughs> the riding mower steering wheel. I put it in the center so he'd remember <laughs> to do that it. That is so I mean, good. He did it, he did it though. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Ocelot chats a lot. Says. Holly Joe LeBay. So mm -hmm. we, when we were talking about the cats. Um, and let's see here. Let me scroll down. Ellen says, I believe animals do understand language, or maybe they understand our intention telepathically. My dogs definitely have vocabulary. Can can you talk a little bit about that, Leslie? This understand intention. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. So a lot of times, um, well, have um, maybe a dog that has separation anxiety and mm. I'll ask, you know, how can we help? And sometimes they'll say something like, if you tell me where you're going and how long you're going to be gone, that might be helpful. And then I won't be quite as, you know, anxiety. So I won't be wondering exactly when you're coming home. Mm -hmm. And so the people will say to me, all right, I'll try it. You know, their, their, their people will say that uh, they said, but will they, will they know what, you know, I'm saying to them, like, they know what you're saying. And I said, um, not always, but they'll get the gist of it. You know, they'll mm -hmm. get your feeling that it's going to be a long time or they'll get your, you know, energy that, oh, I'm just going out, you know, to the store and I'll be right back. So a lot of times they don't know exactly what we're talking about. Um, uh, no, I should say exactly what you're talking about. They know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but a lot of times they will, they'll get the gist of it. They'll get your energy. They'll get your, you know, emotions and they'll know, you know, what you're trying to say. So, um, so yeah, they're, they're definitely, um, even if they don't know specifically, they'll get, you know, feelings. That's interesting. I, I had somebody tell me one time that, um, if, if you're going to be gone on, an overnight or maybe on vacation or something like that um, to share with your, your animal friend, I'm going to be gone for three suns. Three times that the sun comes up and goes down something along those lines is what I've, uh, I've shared before. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Holly Joe says her cats talk to each other. What do they like to talk about? (laughs) Hmm. Kitty tip tat. Um, <laughs> Rob says cats do not understand the language, but do understand vocal inflection. In fact, they use it in their vocalizations. They do not meow at each other. I didn't know that. Hmm. I didn't know. So, so um, cat talk is meowing is just for us. Hmm. And yes, my Sawin, that's her name. She came to me on October 28th, 2012. And so her name is Sawin. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Any other stories to share in the chat room? Let me see if I can scroll up. I'm having some troubles here. Hmm. Um, okay. All righty. Oh, Madonna has one here. When my mom passed, my oldest son was very ill. Couldn't make it to her funeral. He was at the doctor's for hours that day, but stopped at the cemetery on his way home. He was very distraught, crying because he missed being there when a beautiful yellow butterfly landed on the flowers that covered her grave. Yellow was my mom's favorite color. He believes it was my mom offering comfort, saying, it's okay. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. So I'd, I'd like to maybe... Um, this is this is a question that that I posed when we were getting ready for the show, and because um, it's something that I was wondering about, and maybe we can talk a little bit about the idea of. So we know that that as humans, we can have our power animals and totems and animal allies, and maybe we can just briefly um, talk about the difference among those three terms. And then this question that I had, do animals have power animals and totems and allies? So I guess this two part question. So Neshi, can you help us and Leslie help us understand the difference between a power animal and a totem animal? Nashi first. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, this is from my belief system, okay? Because okay. There's, there's a lot of different ones out there. And so um, totems, you can have a birth totem. And totems are meant to be with you your entire life. They're kind of like, it, you know, kind of like guardian angels in a way where, you know, the guardian angel is with you your entire life, has been with you since the inception of your soul, literally, your guardian angel. Well, you're... you're um, your birth totem is with you from the time you come into this physical existence until you leave the physical existence. But you can, you can have more than one birth totem. You can have um, a birth totem, another one come to you if you had a near death experience. Hmm. And so you can, you can, cause you're, you're starting your second life really. So, so you can actually have two. And then I've always had this question about walk-ins you know, um, where souls are exchanging the place in a physical body where one soul is leaving and another one comes in. Well, the walk-in may get a different birth totem because that's literally their first day in a physical body, even though the body has been around for years maybe. So you, that, that's the difference between, and a power animal is one that comes to you to help you with a life lesson or a project that you're working on. And they'll be with you until you complete that life lesson. 
And once you do the completion, then they'll go do something else. And another, another power animal will come in to help you with your next experience. So they come and go. We, I mean, we will always be connected to them because we'll always have the memories, but they're not specifically helping you um, with everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Neshi. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Yeah. Leslie, mm -hmm. what can you add um, to help us understand better the difference between totem animal, power animal, and animal ally? Yeah. So um, I, I also believe that we can call in power animals for different things that we need to, um, you know, if we specifically need courage or if we have an issue with anxiety or something, there are certain power animals that we can call and they will come and help us. And then like you said, Nishi, you know, they kind of, you know, move, move on when we're done with what we needed, you know, bears are for courage and things like that. Um, animal allies. Um, I definitely believe that we have animals that come, and give us messages. Um, and I'll give you one example that happened to me. So I had, um, you know, I, I, I volunteer at the Detroit Zoo, and I'm always at the grizzly bears, of course, right? <laughs> and I showed up one day, and they said, Oh, you know, you need to go to the camels today. And I'm like, no, I'm the bear girl, you know, not camels. And they said, No, we really need you at the camels. So I had to go to the camels. And I actually had a great time that day. Um, but you know, it was just kind of odd. And so I got in my car and as I turned on the radio, there was that song that sings, you know, midnight at the Oasis, put your camel to bed. Yeah. And I thought, oh. I have, I thought I haven't heard that song in like, you know, I don't know, 20 years or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I, um, forgot about it. And then I got home and I had, um, someone call me and ask me if I could talk to their camels. And so like, camel, like, camel, camel. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm like, where is my animal spirit guidebook? I have to go. <laughs> Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I had to, um, I had to find it and look it up and find out what camels meant. And of course it meant, you know, exactly what was going on in my life at that time. So I feel that, mm. you know, they come in and give us these, you know, messages and, and they come in different ways. Either they come, um, you know, like you had with the owl, um, or it's something, you know, with the butterfly where it's like so out of the ordinary, um, or, you know, three times something, you know, comes up. So, um, you know, I feel like they help us in that way too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have, a, my, you know, my native name, Vanessi Kwe, it means, um, it's Potawatomi and it means bird woman. Right. Mm -hmm. And my, my Misha, my grandfather named me and he named me after the Baltimore Oriole. Oh, because it's a happy bird, you know. It's it's happy, and it's uh, it's beautiful. He says. So um, at the the my dad walked on in September of 20, 2010. and it, you know it it was a really emotional grief, lots of things going on emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting on my couch in my living room, and I see some movement in one of the bushes in front of the house. And what it was, it was a Baltimore Oreo. We don't feed birds. We don't feed birds for a lot of reasons. But they, uh, one landed there. It was a male, so he was really brightly colored. You, could, um. you know, and I heard, clear audience, I heard, everything is going to be just fine. You're going to be just fine. Oh. You know? And it was about happiness. And um, and so, you know, as you're right, you know, they come, they come in when... When we need them, we get some feedback going on. When we have some, uh. yeah. or it's a bird talking. Yeah, it's a bird. <laughs> you know, um, maybe we might want to ask the, the our audience: Do they? Do, do, is are you guys hearing the feedback at all? Because maybe we can do something about that. Um, um, so anyway, yeah, Baltimore Oreo. Uh, great, beautiful. Story. I turned down my. Um, my little mic here so oh okay i wonder if if that is doing it thank you for sharing that yeah. oh rob says he's hearing that um let's see if i can turn down mine a little bit more 
Mm. Let's see if that, maybe that helps a little bit. Well, you had a second, second portion to your question. Yes. Yes. The, the idea is do our animal companions and our, our animal friends who live with us, do they have power animals and totem animals that help them? So, well, so um, I don't think so. Um, okay. But I, I do believe that um, animals from the other side, you know, from the spirit world, do come and influence them and mentor them and help them. Um, and sometimes almost they start to mimic them. So I've had clients say to me, um, you know, I had a, had a pet that crossed over and I got another pet and now it's starting to act like my pet that I lost. And um, they'll say, is it, re is it the same, you know, pet reincarnated? And sometimes it is, but very often it's not because sometimes even they were alive at the same time. But a lot of times mm -hmm. it is that, um, like Neshia, um, remember you had Ginger, of course, yeah. and you have George now. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ginger was coming and influencing George, and then George picked up some, you know, personality trait that Ginger had. You know, some something that you would say, oh, that it was, you know, so Ginger's. That yeah. that's that's very kind of like I want to be like Big Sister. Yeah, and kind of like um, almost comforting us that they're there, they're making sure everything's okay. You know, they're... Um, she really kind... likes this, but she really doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of showing them the ropes. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's actually, you know, pretty common that, um, you know, they will see um, animals from our past that they've never met before, things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I agree with Leslie. I don't I don't think that they have their own power animal, so to speak. I do know I do know that from the Deva realm, from the uh, the we people, the fairies, um, that they do help all of us because we're all a part of nature and they're there to help us with things. Right. And uh Oh, gosh, we had just moved into our house, so it had been about 2006. Outside our bedroom window in the bush outside of it, there was a cardinal uh, nesting, and she had um, eggs in it, right? And so <laughs> we scared each other one morning. <laughs> I didn't know she was there, and she didn't know I was there, and that's how we found each other. But anyway, um, the, the, eggs, the eggs hatched, and I was watching them, you know, to see how they were progressing and that kind of thing, and Kind of giving them their own privacy, draw the blinds, and I'd peek in, you know. And um, and so I, I had taken my camera, put it on a tripod, and I was snapping some pictures with the curtain around my camera, right? So I was snapping. And so I couldn't tell what was in focus really well or what wasn't. And when I was looking at the pictures, one was really, really blurry of the mom, of the, the female cardinal. And literally next to her you can you can really see the outline of a little of a little person a little bean with a kind of like a glow around it standing next to the cardinal Ooh. i know <laughs> i showed it to many cansmen right and then he's just going oh my god oh my god can i use that picture and i said sure you can you know but it was so blurry she i mean she really couldn't use it at all but with the naked eye when you're looking at at the digital picture, you could you could literally see it, and so that's my confirmation, right? And Ginger, our old dog, she was really really sick. Uh, she almost died, and I remember waking up one morning and not being able to feel her. She was laying right next to me, but I couldn't feel her, right? And so um, I did a um, it's kind of like a power animal retrieval sort of, but what I was retrieving for her was um, her fairy and asking mm -hmm. the fairy to please come because I don't know what to do to help her. I don't know what to do. And so um, that day we got a telephone call from our vet saying, we found out what's going on with Ginger. She's allergic to aspirin. She's allergic to the willow in the aspirin. Oh, goodness. Yeah. And, and here they had her on aspirin <laughs> oh. <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> 
So, you know, I, I, I really do think that um, that fairy came in to intercede and to help us um, get the help that uh, Ginger needed. So, yeah. So I do believe that we all have, and we do, because we're part of nature. We have fairies who help us too. Beautiful. Yeah. See, all the have- stories. Which, which yeah. one? <laughs> I have one more that really wanted to, to come out um, for me. And this was um, several years ago, maybe 2013. I had been asking spirit, just putting it out there that I really, talking about cardinals again, that I would really like a cardinal feather um, to be left for me. Because I, I had been receiving feathers you know, off and on. And I, for me, it means that it's an Atta girl, like you're on the right path. You're, you're moving along like you, you should doing what you're supposed to just kind of like, here's an encouragement, just an Atta girl, keep going. And I had asked specifically for a cardinal feather, but the, the premise is no cardinal be harmed in the leaving of this feather. I, you know, I don't want any of that. And so I'd ask, and then I'd, um, and I'd just go on and I'd, you know, kind of ask again and I'd really like this and just go on, et cetera. And so just, you know, going about my life, not, not like when you plant the seed, then you dig it up and see if it's still going. <laughs> I just, I left it alone. I'd ask and leave it alone. And so I came home um, one day and, um, you know, I kind of looked down to unlock my door and sticking in the ground propped up against my brick back door was a red cardinal feather. Oh my. Not on the sidewalk, not in the driveway, not walking out to my car at the back of my house, sticking in the ground, just lightly leaning up against my house. Uh Can't miss that. I, I mean, you can't make that instant stuff. tears, <laughs> instant. Wow. You just delivered in a huge way. And it was years before um, I could tell that story because spirit said that is such a special story. It is only for you. It's not to be shared. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've since told it a couple of times, but it, it was that, no, you can't share it. That's sacred. That's, for you that's a message for you mm-hmm. and I mean oh yeah just it still you know wells up inside of me to to share that mm-hmm. not only did you answer my request but you kind of sh- here's the spotlight on it you can't <laughs> ignore it mm-hmm. and it's like this is specifically for you Julie and so yeah nice Hmm. <sighs> that's a whole other show feathers <laughs> <laughs> yeah really. Brenda says she asked for feathers when she's outside has tons of feathers mm. so we have just maybe a couple other stories I know we're at the um, I know we're at the top of the hour let's see um, let's see okay Polly Joe's telling us that Ocelot and Belle talk about food who gets the sunniest spot? Whose turn it is to sleep on the bed? Ocelot is a Reiki master. Mm-hmm. Often comes into the classroom to correct my students in their hand placement. Ooh. All right. All right. After Kitty. They're good teachers. Mm-hmm. They are very good teachers. And Rob says that he swung back around, I guess, with the mower. Yeah. Um, with the bees, I noticed them flying away. I quickly mowed both areas. They were located. So to be out of their way, then they flew back and everybody was happy. Just kind of what you shared, Neshi, about telling him to kind of vacate a little bit. Um, just for just for a, um, a moment or two while uh, the mowing gets done. So, oh, this is, has been such a quick what wonderful hour. And I want to thank you both my very, very special guests and what a blessing this night has been. 
on the tarot journey to talk about animal encounters of the third kind. <laughs> and thank you all in the chat room for sharing your stories of um, just a beautiful, beautiful night. And while we wrap this up here, last words, Leslie and Neshi, any greetings you'd like to leave with anyone for tonight? Mm. Go ahead, Neshi. No, you want me to go? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, you know, is I guess the best one is to remember that we are a part of nature, that we're not separate from it, mm -hmm. and that our relatives, all of our relatives, whether they're two-legged or four-legged or winged, or those who crawl or those who fly, or the those who are green or the stone people, right? Um, that we're all related and and that we're interconnected. So when we have when they come to us, it's because they love us, and we love them. Oh, yeah, very nice. Um, you know, whenever I'm talking to animals, it's really talking to a very intelligent being. They're not, you know, oh. I'm sure no one here thinks they're dumb animals, but they're really, really not, and they're really wonderful teachers. Like. Um, you know, we were talking about one is a Reiki master and corrects their students. Um, you know, absolutely, they are. They're really wonderful teachers. And and um, they have so much that they want to share and can teach us if we're just willing to listen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just have one last thing. I want to, yeah. I would like to thank these two ladies for being a part of Star Nations. They add so much oh, to, their, to our yeah. community. And how they share their information that comes from their heart. And I just want to say thank you to you both because they're both contributing writers to the magazine. Uh, Julie's the, the show host, and she's also one of our authors. And, and uh, we're adding Leslie to the Academy. And they're both. Yay. <laughs> thank you so much, you guys. Both of you. Thank you. It's all you because are. of you. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's all, all to you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Last thing before we sign off, everyone have a beautiful, beautiful full moon coming up in just a couple days here on the 20th. And that's also the spring equinox. And the beautiful thing about that day is, so we have the newness of spring happening at that portal, that grand opening of all possibilities and a full moon at the same time. So the fullness and the richness of everything that can be. So go ahead and start pouring in your intentions and um, planting those seeds and get ready for big harvest this year if you really align your heart and your mind together. So all of you, thank you for joining me tonight. May the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Be with each and every one of you. Om Shanti and good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Trying to end it.